I mean, like all these women. <laughs> I found it interesting that I was like, wow, this is like a thing. Um, and I, you know, when I had mentioned to Mary, like, is there a book out there about, you know, Coulter's lives and stuff? Why is the saying this video is private? Okay. okay. All right. It says we're live. Okay. Hold on. I'm getting over there. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yeah, I guess it... Google. I'm I'm logged into way too many Google accounts. <laughs> that would make sense. Um, I always have to like remind myself to like switch out of stuff. So that I'm not logged into something you need to get into, because I know that I've watched that cause problems before. And tonight, for the moment, I have the YouTube up on my phone um, because when we get to the to the Eli Whitney article, I actually found something cool to show. Ah, cool. I actually have a little bit of intel about the Eli Whitney thing. Maybe you know too, but I, I, I had to look up some stuff about it. <laughs> well then, I think we probably looked hey up guys. some- Hey guys, hey Dim. hi Robin. What would we do without Robin? All right, so here we are. We're at the end. I'm a little sad. Oh. <laughs> I am, I'm not sad at the fact that I don't have to lug this heavy thing around anymore. Yeah. Man, is this a heavy book for not? It being is. It's it is on the bigger side. Um, this has been a really fantastic experience, I have to say. Um, but also, it, I feel like it's been um a lot of responsibility <laughs> because I mean these are more serious papers, and of course we know some of the people. Mm -hmm. Um and. Yeah, I, I, you know, I wanted to treat them, read them seriously. And, you know, after, <laughs> after the uh, murder at the cult show, you know, I know we have to be kinder and, <laughs> um, but no, this is, it has been a really great experience to read these. Mm. And, you know, I wish that I had enough time to serially go through like all of uncoverings, you know, but who has time for that? <laughs> well, at the, at the bare minimum today, I was like, I kind of hope, like, maybe we should, I don't, like, mention to somebody, like, hey, you guys, you did this book in the 80s. It's it's time to do another collection, you know, of writings with updates mm -hmm. and, and, you know, maybe yeah. more and better photography of things and, <clears throat> um, you know, just... Yeah, and you know, for what I understand, I can't remember who told me, but Rutledge Hill Press, um, apparently they were, a lot of folks had, I guess, AQSG folks that wrote books. Rutledge Hill was their publisher. Oh. And um, yeah, I, I Are guess. Are they not around anymore? Of, that's the impression I got. I, no, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like it was, Rutledge Hill was like AQSG's publisher. And I don't know if they still are. I don't know. I mean, uncoverings. I'm not sure how they how that's published. It's not not it because it's. I guess it's not the published the same way. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, it has an ISBN, but I don't. It's not the kind of the same thing. It's like mm -hmm. I don't know. What yeah. do I know? <laughs> I mean, a lot um, of times we know nothing. Yeah. But so yeah. um, so we've got announcements. Do we have announcements? Of course, we have announcements. Because uh, obviously, when one book closes, another one opens. And um, if if you're not tired of us talking about how you need to get this, <clears throat> we're going to tell you again about how you need to get this. Because this is the book that we start next week. So tonight is the first assignment. 
which which will be we're going to break this book up into four sections since there's nicely 12 uh, chapters so we'll be reading chapters one two and three for next time which will be april 9th oh my goodness that is right before steph and i go on a trip there's so many things happening um so if you haven't gotten this yet you need to get your paws on it asap and you can get it directly from the author don ronigan she has an etsy shop and her handle in there is collector w a needle um hey robin any chance you could stick that into the chat for me please thank you very much right. or are you gonna stick it in somebody stick it in yeah. um and the very cool thing is sometimes we're reading books and things where the authors aren't around anymore and that is very sad but one night in, in our quilt making in America, we had Mary Kay Walvogel in the chat while we were talking about her article, which was really exciting. And luckily for us, when reading this book, when we finish, we're going to get to have Dawn on as a special guest. And you will be able to have questions and things for her about her book and collecting and, you know, whatever tickles your fancy with that. She's got other really cool things on her site for you to peruse. And there's going to be like goodies and stuff. So yeah, there's I don't know why you wouldn't want to be involved with goodies and stuff, especially for participants. So I, I can ju just, uh, just to throw in a plug here, we may be upping our game. <laughs> <laughs> in many ways <laughs> this whole experience is probably gonna like step the, the bar is being raised <laughs> that means more responsibility doesn't it <laughs> well so for one there's definitely by the end of this going to be a giveaway um the ins and outs of that are still being ironed out but the giveaway is going to be for participants only and the only way we can really know that you're participating is if you take a lovely picture with this book. Now you can be fun with that. You can take an actual selfie with the book. You don't have to be in the picture. It can be a setup on your desk and it's a cozy reading nook. It can be a picture of the book with your pet. Get creative, but send us a picture with you in this book. You can send it to uh, the account on Facebook. You can send it to the account on Instagram so that we can share with the world that you are reading along and that is gonna enter you into a giveaway that we'll do at the very end. This is gonna take us four weeks to read. Then we'll have a special stream that's just with Dawn and that's when you'll be entered into that. And then there's probably also gonna be some goodies in between there as well. So- It's gonna be fun. Yeah. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be like the best fun we've had. Oh my God, the link actually showed up, Steph. Maybe we're finally approved for links. <laughs> At least it's showing up on my phone. Um. So yeah, so make sure you're doing that. Please go uh, support Dawn and order the book from her. It'll be autographed. And that's what we're doing there. And then probably like next week, we'll let everyone know what the book after that will be so that you have time to get that as well. Mm -hmm. Any other announcements you'd like to announce now, Steph? I think that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, there's there's a tie-in to my stream yesterday when we get to it. But oh, that's you know, it was those of you that were there yesterday. You're gonna be like, or you should have been like, what? <laughs> if you did your reading last night like I did, <laughs> you should have seen something that you saw yesterday. I'm on my stream. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't around for the whole thing. So I'm wondering if I missed yeah. that part. All right. Well, yeah, it was, it was later in the stream. So it may have only been me. That's all. I don't know. <laughs> you were the only one there. <laughs> well, you know, my, my lurkers, they lurk and then they, they kind of listen for their name. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. All righty. Well, let's, let's get to it here on our, to it. our last hurrah. So with first, our, may with I our... say. Mm. I wish I had known Joyce Joyce Gross. Right? <laughs> she is so funny. And <laughs> the way she tells these stories about these people. And you know what's really sad, too, is I looked it up. She only just passed in 2012. I know. I think she and uh, Questa Benberry passed away not too long apart. And I don't know. 
you know, who was first, but yeah. And they, they were great friends from what I understand. So they were kind of like, I don't, well, I think it was sort of a group of those ladies, um, mm -hmm. were sort of like, you know, hijinks and hooligans <laughs> in the quilt mm -hmm. world. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, excuse me. Uh, so of course, some of the people that Joyce is talking about in this paper are near and dear to my heart, one of whom would be our dear friend Florence Petto. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get to her in a second. But Bertha Stange, um, I've, you know, I've talked to a few people about her, but this was interesting to read more about her mm -hmm. now in here. And um, she is my tie-in, of course, to what I talked about yesterday. And then um, the other two, Jeanette Throckmorton and Myrtle May Fortner. <laughs> All I have to say is, where did we find these people? <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, they like, were they were fantastic cool. quilters, but <laughs> I've never um, heard of either of them. I don't think I have. Well, okay, so the Matterhorn quilt Hi, I've Jan. seen a million a million times. Mm -hmm. Um, I know we looked at it on Quilt Nerd. Mm -hmm. um it's in a bunch of books mm -hmm. um and for some reason I thought it was somebody else that made it I just don't think I ever had like paid enough attention to the name you yeah. know like, the quilt and is I, recognizable yeah. but if it's just a mm -hmm. name on a quilt that you don't ever hear ever again anywhere else it's not really gonna stick yeah exactly so um so the Matterhorn yeah the Matterhorn is something I've seen a lot and I and I guess in my mind, I thought of like Emma Andres and um, Charles, I can't think of his name, mm -hmm. um, that did those little, you know, those little itty bitty block quilts, um, mm -hmm. the pixel quilts or the cross stitch quilts, even though they're not really cross stitch. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, when I saw this, I was like, not Emma Andres. Okay. Um, Myrtle May. <laughs> I'm sorry, this woman. So first of all, there's a couple things in here where I'm like, is this a typo or what? Like what? So she's she's born Myrtle May Melvin, poor woman. Um, but then <laughs> when she talks about, you know, her older sister dies, leaving her two daughters and these two little girls, Flora and Myrtle. <laughs> and and I'm like, really? Is the the, her niece also named Myrtle, yet mm -hmm. that's not the niece that she connected with. She's like, oh, you're named after me. Step aside. I love Flora. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just what I got from reading this. You know. <laughs> um, marrying her first cousin, despite people's objections. <laughs> and then she goes to live in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, what? And then there's this picture of her. And I was like, Yep, that's exactly what I thought she would look like. <laughs> I mean, just what an interesting person <laughs> in all kinds of ways. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I find Jeanette Throckmorton uh, even more interesting. Well, um, yes. Um, to become a doctor at that point and be female is a big deal. It is. And... um. So, yeah, so Myrtle May Fortner, I guess, just, you know, she, she, I mean, really, it's only like two quilts that she's really known for, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But, I mean, just what an odd person. You know, if, if this was one of your relatives or one of your friends, you would be like, oh, my God, let me tell you about Murdy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> so, all right. So, Jeanette Throckmorton. <laughs> um, I had so many questions about her. Um. So she leaves her her father's medical practice in 1919 because of her loss of hearing, which, I mean, that's terrible. And I'm sure it's communication with patients and stuff. But then she goes on to do all this other stuff. And mm -hmm. I'm like, well, I guess your, hear your lack, you know, hearing problems didn't affect any of this other stuff you're doing. Mm -hmm. That was interesting. Um, but the fact that she wanted everyone to name their children Jeanette or Jean. <laughs> yeah, that was just bizarre. I was like, oh, and the fact that her husband, I mean, and this is so sad. Her husband, he dies 10 days after the ceremony and his, and her stepdaughter's name is Jeanette. 
like really are some of these typos really like this is crazy well remember they met each other in med school and maybe they had a little flame going but she promised her dad she wouldn't marry anyone because she didn't marry anyone until her dad died right so right but why would this her. man name his child after her um because like <laughs> do, didn't you ever watch the movie becoming jane yes I where he married he marries yeah. and like he made he, he names his first daughter jane I yeah, know people do yes, stuff it's like creepy. That. Okay. Yes, it's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just these two. These two are just yeah. And um, then I find I thought it interesting, like in the very last little nugget about her, in a tribute published in Nimble Needle Treasures, which we read about that, Maxine Teal writes about her, which we know who that is from. I know, and I, I was as I was reading, I was like, oh Maxine, we've come across her before. Yep. It's kind of funny because like I feel like with a lot of the names we read about from like, you know, 1880s up into well, actually like a hundred years almost up until like 1980s. I feel like we just keep hearing the same names over and over and over again because it's just like the same big chunk of people <laughs> doing doing things that end up in print, basically. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I mean, I think that I mean, just quilt study in general. You know, there have been these people that have been focused on. So Janet yeah. does not want us to gloss over the fact that Murdy did build her own yes! shack in yeah, the yeah, woods. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, yeah, that was that was what I kind of did gloss over. You know, and saying that then she went to live in the woods. I mean, yeah, no running water, nor electricity, but she had a pleasant life. And then at some point, where is it? Where she says. I'm done with this. I'm going to move somewhere where there's I guess water. It, I guess it is decided. I will put the house on the market and have a cottage built. I got to have electricity. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I looked at the picture of her and went, yeah. <laughs> she looks like the kind of person who said that. You know, I I don't, I, someone probably knows the answer to this and I hope it's a good answer. It probably is. But I did find this like reading through all this and seeing all the things that are, um, part of Joyce's collection. Where did her collection go? Because we uh, know where Custis went, right? Yeah. Um, Joyce's is at the Briscoe Center. Okay. Okay. Good. I knew it would probably be like the market. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it is somewhere good. It's really hard to get access to just because that the makes Center me upset. Is like, That's yeah. but hmm, we know somebody who's going to be going to school in Austin soon, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll probably have a uh, really good access to that collection. <laughs> um she lost all of her part yeah the stock market crash yeah i mean there's a lot of you know a, a lot of these women that we read about in these you know 20th century quilters they do they they faced you know stuff that's sad you know stuff that i mean we can relate to um you know our ancestors you know my grandparents my great-grandparents they faced a lot of the same kind of stuff um well i mean we so. it's not we can also relate because like we lived through like 2008 and that crash mm -hmm. and how that yeah. affected all kinds of people and a and... pandemic <laughs> well i mean a whole lot more than that like a whole lot yes, more than yes that. absolutely <laughs> we we yes definitely um oh the other thing jeanette throckmorton um her thesis the wisdom of mother of mother goose i would love to have read that i mean yeah what a stinker it doesn't survive at least that we know yeah. of at this point mm-hmm um um it's is Jeanette Throckmorton's quilts none of her quilts are shown in here are they no which is like no so, that stinks because there's a bunch yeah, of them and yeah. they're in museums but unless the museum the museums didn't give they're an art institute of Chicago mm -hmm. oh wait they're described and printed in American quilts in the art institute of Chicago so I don't know if maybe like they couldn't get permission or just space i don't know could be yeah yeah and I, I thought it was interesting that at the time the smithsonian was not accepting recent works mm -hmm. i thought that was interesting too um and that's why she went to the um to chicago so um what else did i want to say about her i think that was probably about all i mean throckmorton jeanette throckmorton what a name right it's almost as good as murdy melvin <laughs> <laughs> well, to a certain degree, I feel like a lot, like we got a lot of boring names these days. Like they don't have the gumption that you know, yeah, like that that Murdy Melvin had, you know, right. So uh, let's move on to Bertha Stangy because she is delightful, 
and well and especially like this picture of her is just like so so sweet i can guarantee yeah she's there's like no pictures of my grandmother where like she looks that nice of a person (laughs) well i have to say my grandmother was actually a very lovely person so um now i just have to find what i'm looking for here Um, i couldn't believe in here um weren't winning a one thousand dollar grand prize in 1942 a lot of money that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. and that was that was that would even still be a lot of money today to win you know yeah there and there was there was something else in here i thought about um actually it's in the it's in the betts ramsey paper about money and i was like that's a lot of money oh no i know what you're talking about yeah so as i mentioned we're reading this on my stream Mm -hmm. america quilts and coverlets by florence petto and of course we're going to get to her in a minute but look what i showed everybody yesterday and i said oh yeah yeah what what a cool quilt like look at this you know this was me you know it says um I don't think there was a date on it, but the book was this, this book was written in 1949. So, you know, it predates that. So, you know, this is just a very unique, yeah, it's a very unique quilt for that time mm-hmm. period, right? Like you just don't see things like that. And the detail that Florence Petto has is that it's from the collection of Bertha Stange did not say she made it. So what I said yesterday was, uh, you know, I don't know if she made this or not. It was in her collection. Well, then last night I'm doing my reading <laughs> like like a good little quilt nerd. And of course, see this. And I was like, it's the quilt party. And I mean, what a cool quilt. You know, and, I, and I just... look at and look at who might have some kind of access to it. Um, Yeah. <laughs> uh we do know that our our dear friend mary Kay uh did do a lot of research on bertha stangy so she's got um i want to say like a lot of the bertha stangy kind of ephemera and stuff ha- is in mary Kay's collection and i'm guessing might be on quilt and ducks i'm pretty sure uh, i know all of her like um depression era ephemera is there mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so i suspect i'm not positive but i suspect that um the Bertha Stangy stuff does too because it's all kind of the same era so yeah well and Um, then like you know like shout out to your girl Florence just because we're talking about people's improvement but like oh my god this like selling setup oh yeah yeah and I guess you know that was one thing like her so I have her biography um and I should have grabbed it but it's very good but I have not yet read it cover to cover did I know that there was a biography about her? Have you talked about that? Maybe not. Who wrote it? <laughs> um, it's a couple of people wrote it. It's a group of people that wrote it. And the only place I found to purchase it right now is at the Quilters Hall of Fame. So I don't know if it's if they had some hand in, in publication, if it's people that I are mean, affiliated with the Quilters Hall sense. of Fame. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a very good book. But I mean... Yeah. <laughs> it's a very focused on pedo so i mean if you aren't a pedo fan i know a few people who are not because she's mm-hmm. kind of a mouth <laughs> well, I, was gonna, I was just gonna say to people if you like this picture here this setup of quilt selling and you're like oh my god look at all those you gotta get your bum to the aqsg seminars at the bare minimum on the day that they yeah. open the the selling the vendors to the public because that's that's a, it's a whole room of nothing but that. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. I mean, this, to me, this looks to me like it could have been lifted right out of a ASG yeah. seminar. And well, you vendor. know what's funny yeah. is that if you if you remember stuff, I remarked when we were in Louisville, which I need to remember to bring this up. When we were in the vendor hall, it's it's tight, but obviously not every building is going to be the same. I made a comment that I wish there were like places for minion people to sit shoppers. Because it's so like a museum, you know, like it's overwhelming and you might, need, you know, like I, I kind of needed a minute to just be like, wow, <laughs> you know, like, the palate cleanser. Yeah, it, it was overwhelming when I went in there. I was like, oh, my. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> and there was a literally like, guys, many... literally that happened. She did that. <laughs> well, I'm like, were there like, and there were like 10 vendors there. At least, <laughs> at least 10. 
Mm-hmm. Well, but I mean, my point being is it wasn't like going to like a giant quilt show where there's, oh yeah you know, 50. aisles and aisles of different types of vendors and things. I mean, this is like a very small space with like, you know, maybe 10 vendors, but you know, imagine booths that look like this, you know, in this picture. Yeah. 10 um, of them. But Yeah. 10 <laughs> of them just with all of these gorgeous old quilts. Uh, but what I was going to say is I didn't realize that Florence did like shows like that she went to antique shows I, yeah, I kind of thought that know. she did I yeah she I kind of thought that she enjoying. did all of this stuff just through word of mouth and just through her travels I didn't realize that she had, and, and it makes sense like she would have attended antique shows but um as a vendor but I just never realized that she did mm-hmm. um yeah so and and this was well it's kind of sad is the two women that are in the picture is her daughter-in-law and her daughter um, right and it's because she was sick. Mm-hmm. She wasn't able. And she she suffered. I mean, she lived fairly old. I think she lived to her late ni- 80s, early 90s. Uh, she might have lived to 90. But she had. Yeah, she was born like, in 1881 and died in 1970. Yeah. So um, she she had health problems like all her life. <clears throat> but like just reading um, her letters where she talks about some of the stuff. um. It's it was kind of like she'd be sick for a while and she'd bounce right back and get back to doing, you know, whatever it was. So um what I do think is funny is she would write these really long letters. And I kept wondering, like, how does this woman have time to write all these letters? And as I'm reading here, the and I think these are this is all Emma Andre's letters, right? Um, letters between mm-hmm. Florence and Emma. She says many things to Emma Andres that are the exact same things she said to Elizabeth Richardson. I just recognize phrases and stuff. Mm-hmm. Things she talks about, like, um, I'm trying to think where's one. Uh, who was on this page? She says, uh, oh, the thing about <clears throat> they keep me talking and talking. It's a wonder someone hasn't popped me into the U.S. Senate. The only place where there's more talking than I do. She said that to to Elizabeth Richardson too, I believe. And um, there was one other thing in here that I thought sounded familiar. Um, yeah, now I can't find it. But yeah, I so I was kind of like, well, this is how she writes these long letters. I mean, it's still an effort. Sometimes she typed them. Sometimes she wrote longhand. Um, but I'm kind of like, she sort of tells the same stories uh-huh. to everybody she's writing, I guess. And then she sort of plugs in the specifics of like, you know, did Elizabeth ask her a question or was there something specific she needed to tell Elizabeth? So I was like, so that's the strategy that a prolific letter writer takes <laughs> is you kind of your, your news about yourself. You just repeat the same to everybody. <laughs> I mean, don't we still do that now though? When you yeah. I mean, yeah. Friends? Yeah, uh, of course. Um, but the thing is, I don't write to people very often. I mean, I, no. I send emails. Now we just, now but it's I mean, just the phone, we, but. Yeah, we just don't do that anymore. But even when I did, I'm thinking, I mean, I was, I was pretty young when I was writing letters and um, I didn't have that many people to write. So I can definitely say that there is definitely times where I will copy and paste the same text message to multiple people <laughs> if something is going on that I don't want to keep typing out. <laughs> yeah. So can I also mention this no. beautiful cal- the calico garden quilt? Yes. Is stunning. And mm-hmm. it reminds me, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. It reminds me of like Kim Deal. Yeah, kind of. She, you know, she's a contemporary quilter. Um and it just I guess I don't know if it's the colors or I, I mean, know, I could definitely sure. see this as Kim Deal fabric. <clears throat> Like yeah, the yeah that she likes exactly. To do. Um, but what I will say about Florence, and I don't know if this was very clear in the reading, but she actually sourced antique fabric to make these quilts. Mm-hmm. Like this isn't just like regular old like calicos of the day. This is a lot of this is felt um, fabrics that she sourced, specific, like the chintzes. Mm-hmm. She sourced antique chintz and sewed with it. Which I'm like, oh my gosh, I would like, I can't even imagine the few pieces of antique fabric I have. I'm like, oh my gosh, I would never consider cutting them up. <laughs> you know? I know. Because they're, sm- they're small pieces. Like, you know, oh, I've got some that have, that have got some girth to them. But you know what, too, is like, 
We need to make a trip to the Shelburne Museum. I've never been there. I know the Shelburne is just they yeah the Shelburne I'm sure is a candy land. <laughs> well that um, and you know who's BFFs with the Shelburne? That's Pam Weeks. Ah uh, uh, okay. So we we might be able to like you know get into the Shelburne. <laughs> um Oh, one thing in here, it says, uh, so the last letter from Mrs. Petter to Emma Andres is dated December 1957, in which she enclosed a hanky with a brief note. <clears throat> now, the date, the date what, doesn't match up, um, because I think what she sent Dr. Dunton was in the late 40s or early 50s. So it wouldn't have been 57. They weren't speaking at that point. But anyway, she also sent a handkerchief to Dr. Dunton. It was a quilt. Um, it was like a. Well, it wasn't just a quilt block. It was like a full sort of quilt. It, it was it was very cool. Um, but I was like, that's interesting that she sends things like that to, mm -hmm. to all of her um, correspondents. Mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah. I think that was all I, I had to say about these four women. They're all no, I found it. I found it very way. interesting. I found it very mm -hmm. interesting. Let, let's uh keep uncle eli's quilting party for our last okay because i have something to show about that and let's go on okay. to um the to land of cotton. Paper. yeah and this quilt oh my god this like so, this, this people's quilt like oh yes i love this quilt this quilt is so oh cool. my goodness it's um amazing. and i'm not sure if it's this quilt but i know that there is a quilt that i've seen somewhere out there where um she traced like magazine art you know, like magazine stuff and coloring books and things like just media that she could get her hands on she traced the people to make these patterns and i'm not sure if it's lillian Beatty or not who did this but i mean that's kind of what this looks like to me but i'm not sure um but yeah it's such a fascinating looking thing and it's not really a quilt it's a coverlet mm -hmm. right because it's not actually quilted um, but what I will say about the author of this paper, Bets Ramsey, she is a, she will be 101 this year. <laughs> I don't think her birthday has passed yet. It might, it might have already passed. I can't remember. Um, but yes, she's 101 this year. She still lives in Tennessee. And um, I don't know if she's still making quilts, but she was until recently, at least. Um, <clears throat> I want to say at seminar, there was a quilt they talked about, you know, she makes small stuff now, but um that was made in like I don't know sometime over the pandemic at least so mm -hmm. um now at 101 she may be done with the quilt so, but <laughs> she's still with us I and I just love that because you know it's I feel it's sad that we lost so many of these women that did all of this research and um you know but Bets is still with us so mm -hmm. <clears throat> So I know the one thing that really stood out to me in here was the story about, um, let's see, it's Hattie, she, what's her last name? Hattie Bryant. Adrian. And where she talks about after um, her father sold eight to 10 bales of cotton at $1,000 a bale. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really good money, right? And then he gave each of his children $100. You know, <laughs> that and what year would have this, you know, I don't know that she actually had the year in here really clearly, but we know it's at a time somewhere sometime in the 20th century, I would guess that, I mean, that's just a lot of money. And it's amazing to me that, and it's, it's, it's a great thing that at some points in time, cotton farmers were, it was lucrative. Because unfortunately, we hear so often about, you know, well, and I think she does talk about the bull weevil mm -hmm. and, um, you know, how cotton crops were always problematic, you know, just in, in terms of being, you know, cash crops. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah. And I then then there's the the instructions on taking the the ink out of the bat the uh, bags oh yeah i i well it's funny i was <laughs> when i was reading that i was like oh look at that we got that although they mentioned that like that even wasn't even necessarily their goal they were just washing it period mm -hmm. and yeah, then sometimes um, it didn't come out but yeah. 
Well, I mean, that's how that's how one of the ways we even know they were using them at all is we can still see some of the prints. Um, but then I thought saw it interesting that was they had to unsew the flower sacks and they would save the thread. Yes, I had heard that. Yeah, I've heard that before. I had not and heard the that. Well, the cool thing about the sacks, and I, I think, um, I mean, I have seen flower sacks, and then we used to have ham sacks, too, because um, my, my grandfather's family were Smithfield um, ham producers or Smithfield pork producers. <laughs> and so if you get a ham, a cured ham, it would come in this, like, sack, um, and the way they're made with a chain stitch, they're, they're stitched together with a chain stitch. Like, I think all of these types of things, so you literally will find the end and just, mm -hmm. and it's like a zipper. And then you end up with this like long piece of thread or it's not really yarn. It's not really thread. It's, um, I don't know, string, <laughs> I guess that's what it's string. Like pearl um, cotton weight. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, who was it told me yesterday? And was it? Mara Dim, was it you who was talking about using balloon string for her stuff? We were talking about different balloon different string? weights of thread and string and stuff. Yeah. And she mentioned oh. balloon string. And I was like, oh, that is an interesting thread to use or string or, you know, what is the difference between a thread, a string and a yarn? Wait, I don't know where the I was going to say, is. wait, are you asking me? Like, that's a whole nother no, episode. It's a rhetorical question I'm just throwing out there that has nothing to do with what so, we're reading. So, Marodim said twine <laughs> and yes. Twine. Okay, that's another good one. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> the idea of pulling the string, you know, the string off of the sacks is, yeah, I mean, that's one of those things. I want to say my grandmother even talked about that. They would save any little bits that they could. And that's why they... Haven't you seen those? And there's different kinds of them, like the the twine ball holders. I have a couple of them. I have one that's like a cast iron one. And then I have mm -hmm. one that's, I want to see it's made out of a coconut. And there's like a hole board in it. And it's like a mouth, like it's painted like a face and you mm -hmm. pull the string out of its mouth. Those weren't just like you go to the store and buy a ball of, of twine. <laughs> those were like, you wrapped your own twine around those and oh. put it back in the holder. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, but the one thing in here that I noticed, I, I read the thing, oh, we'd wash them, use homemade lye soap, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm trying to think, was it here? It might not be in this part where they actually say strong lie, but as I was finishing the article or the, the paper, I don't know if you noticed in her footnotes or her end notes, she says, ah, where is it now? Just read it. Uh, uh, the phrase strong lye soap is probably used by someone who is unacquainted with homemade soap. Lye is indeed strong, but when combined with household grease or renderings, it is chemically changed to make a mild soap of excellent cleaning quality. <laughs> so I thought that was funny. Um, that reminds me, have you settled on lard yet? I have not settled on lard yet, but I did get some very good intel about the kerosene and what I have obtained is not actually kerosene but lamp oil lamp oil or paraffin is actually um like clean kerosene so all kerosene is paraffin but not all paraffin is kerosene so we have a lamp oil and it's the same thing i believe you <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like um i guess i i would say it's like um it's like the extra virgin olive oil version of kerosene. <laughs> They've refined it like one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, that's a good way, I guess, of, of describing it. Yeah. So, um, did you, were you drooling over this umbrella girl quote? Yes, like ma'am. And you know, it's really funny. I think I'd mentioned like this was, this book was probably the very first book I ever bought when I was, you know, quilt history. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, admittedly, I did not read it. Like, you know, I flipped through it and I looked and, at all the pictures. And that's why we're reading it now. <laughs> exactly. And yeah, so you see my flags. So I flagged this one, of oh, course, yeah. which we looked at last time. And I had flagged this one. And this one is so cute. And, you know, I was I was trying to, like, get my face up close to it to see um, if I could see anything that, you know, like, looked like I could track it down I haven't I haven't tried to find it yet but, I was gonna say it says it's um, Hunter Museum of Art well I'm saying the pattern not oh, the, pattern. the pattern yeah she although actually well, of course she... it says collection of Ruby Beard and then courtesy so I'm wondering if she lent it to the museum 
but I, uh, you said you you tried and didn't find it. Like Quilt Index didn't have any. I have it. Yeah, I haven't done a, a deep oh. dive yet. But she calls it um, Umbrella Girl. So, yeah. But, so um, Janet mentions about the kerosene. She's heard it called white kerosene. Yes. I have heard none of these things. <laughs> <laughs> well, kerosene. I mean, it's a it's a petroleum distillate. Like, <laughs> sure. And yeah, and so lamp oil is like the yeah the uh the finer version of that okay uh, it's it's just when you burn it like it has less like impurities in like whatever smoke it gives off which is you know you're doing that in your house you would want that versus say kerosene that you maybe would be using outdoors that's you know not a sooty i guess so gotcha. we'll be good we'll be good I, i've got us just the right caustic chemical for our experiments <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, and if all else fails, we can and and like it doesn't work, and we're just over. We can just light them on fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> but anyway, yes, I thought this quilt was so cute, and um, yeah, I was trying to look at it close. It looks like the little the little person or the little Sue. Mm -hmm. Um, she has bloomers. Mm hmm. And um, just so sweet, so cute. Um. Yeah, I would say, you know, I mean, as, as I, I guess there was not a whole lot in this particular paper that where I was like, kind of like, whoa, you know, I learned something because I think I've, I've read a lot of stuff recently, kind of covered some of these topics. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I, you know, I did see like a couple of things in here, just, you know, every time you read about black communities at, you know, during these time periods, it just is like a punch in the gut. Um on page 187, where she says, Luella Jones did not live near enough a school for Black children to allow her to attend. So she had to pay to go to school in Dalton, Georgia. Then she went to boarding school for high school. And her family had paid for her entire education, which was a great sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the white children of Georgia, no matter how poor they were, were getting free education. And I'm like, that freaking sucks. <laughs> like, that just makes me so mad when I read stuff like that. No, I'll, I, I'll, I'll quickly step off my soapbox because, you know, I mean, it is what it is, but that, that's find, just when I read stuff like that just makes me so mad. Yeah, I find reading articles about um, Black history, slave history, things like that, I just find them very humbling. And yeah, for sure. it's hard, it's hard for me to discuss just because, one, I I feel awkward discussing this history that's right yeah because it's so not dark history. and also i i just feel i just feel like i just am supposed to be a plant and i'm supposed to just soak this in and um and give uh, give honor to these stories being told mm -hmm. um in a way that doesn't invite a whole lot of commentary i guess would be my way to put it Okay. That's why I feel that's why I, I feel like I don't necessarily have a whole lot to say other than like, wow. <laughs> like it's just yeah, it's a lot to take yeah. in. It's a lot there's sure. a lot that I didn't know because you were doing some deep dives recently that I was not doing. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Well, I mean, the stories about these folks, they kind of, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, they're they're in different parts of the South, but they in a lot of ways kind of um parallel my own families I mean you know my Appalachian side because <laughs> then there's the the east coast people the eastern they're they were they were beach rednecks whereas my <laughs> my Appalachian people they're they're the mountain rednecks they are beach um, rednecks <laughs> they were just closer they're just closer to the coast <laughs> um but no I just you know I think that in many in many cases you know the terms of like the farming and the things that happened before and after the depression and you know, my own family, like, really paralleled some of these things. But, you know, when I read these stories, I'm like, yeah, okay. So my great-grandmother was not a sharecropper. She did own her own farm. But she toiled side by side with, I mean, there was a Black family that lived behind them. They were sharecroppers. And she toiled in the same way alongside them, you know. But she and her family definitely had privileges, you know, beyond measure, compared to the people that lived in their community. And so when I read this, I see, I see so much of that, you know, I'm like, you know, listening to the stories my grandmother would tell her childhood was, I mean, terrible poverty, like 
terrible poverty. And, you know, it was all her mother could do to kind of keep the whole family together and not lose the farm, basically. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when I read these things, I'm like, oh, you know, it's one of those, I mean, like you said, like, what do you even say? It's like, I lamented not having shoes until I met the man who had no feet, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, it's one of those kind of things. So, yeah. Well, your um, perspective reading them is definitely unique because you're now seeing kind of another side to the same time period, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, um, yeah. Of, absolutely. The, of the stories you're already hearing. That's the other thing for me is, is being from the North. Although my dad's from Georgia, but no one ever talks about that. So I don't really know what's going on there. Um and my mom's actually from Florida, but um, I, being from the North, I don't have it like almost any of that kind of history. Um, so there's definitely a disconnect because a ton of stuff in here is stuff I'm about the South that I just never knew about the South because I'm not from the South. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's a very that's a very unique perspective to be reading this from because you're mirroring your own well yeah time. and I mean I think like you know in reading these stories I think you know how how similar yet how different mm -hmm. you know I mean the I I think like the in the home the situation in the home was very similar but socially it was different yeah um uh one one thing I'd like to point out I also love any quotes with writing on them mm-hmm you know, not not necessarily inking, but writing. So oh, yeah, the, H the, quilt. H the H quilt has a T. Yep. <laughs> I was like, hey, that's a T. <laughs> no, that's actually the first thing I noticed. I wonder if that was on purpose. Or if, or yeah, if the know. other half just fell off. Yeah, I don't know. I, I thought, well, maybe it was the fabric was. And I'm like, no, that's definitely a T. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, if it was made by Vance Thomas, maybe it was meant for someone with an H name with the last name Thomas. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Vasey they Thomas. These are the... What did I say, Vance? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Vasey, um, I can read. <laughs> so, Rose Grimmett. Now the story, the 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 information about her, I thought was interesting because she taught. They talked about, you know, she had this carefree attitude, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, if they don't, if, they, if the points don't match, it's okay. Oh, if the stripe, if the columns and the rows don't match, also okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it says as a farm laborer, she was used to putting quilts together as rapidly as possible, and she retains that habit. You know, and I started thinking about that, and you know, I think like. You know, we often joke today and it's like, oh, bless her heart and those toenail catcher stitches or, you know, I look at them and go like, oh, my gosh, it makes me feel better about my own work, <laughs> you know, because like things were not perfect in the past the way we like to, you know, paint them as these, you know, amazing quilt makers from the past. Um, but it really makes sense to me if you, when you think about the perspective and my two of my great grandmothers quilted a lot and I have a number of the quilts from the one great grandmother, um, her quilts were she she pretty much made the, the same pattern over and over it was jacob's ladder they were all very scrappy it was she was dealing with the scrap bag and she made them really quickly and it was because the woman was like harvesting tobacco <laughs> like most of the time she did not have time you know to like really worry about making quilts and so mm -hmm. she too made these quilts like crazy you know crazy fast and so they might, you know, you might look at me and think, oh, it's kind of sloppy, but it was really not about being sloppy. It wasn't about bad craftsmanship. It was just like, I got to get this quilt done because we have one more baby or child here who needs a blanket on them. And it's, you know, it's getting colder. Well, and the, the comment very early and earlier on in the article was that almost all of the women in here mentioned that they made quilts based on necessity and economy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And also the funny and, thing about, like, I just thought about this when you mentioned, like, the toenail catcher. It's weird that we, like, use that um, as a phrase because, but, generally really, speaking, the quilt's worn against your body. Right, exactly. Like, how, how, are, you how are you catching your toenails on those quilts, huh? Well, I was going to say, <laughs> that would actually be, like, a millennial thing because a lot of millennials <laughs> hate top sheets. 
I don't. Yes, I, like I, I saw that sheet. recently. Yeah, I like. I saw that sheet. recently, and I was like, "How gross!" Like you should always have a sheet. I don't know why. I don't know why they're so anti-top sheet. Like to me, the most annoying sheet is the fitted one. But I mean, whatever. But yeah, like people generally speaking would have had other layers between mm -hmm. them and whatever the quilt was. So their toenails mm -hmm. aren't ever coming next to the quilt. Exactly. Anyway, it's just a little side nugget of thought. <laughs> Let's, on today's show, let's talk about your toenails. <laughs> okay, so I have we have been neglecting the um the chat. So here. the question so. was asked about what experiment we're talking about, and the experiment, which was mentioned earlier about Steph and I leaving soon for a trip, has a whole big bag here of uh and my mom is bringing my mom said she might bring some too she has some yeah, she that said, she acquired recently. Said she she snagged some for us um you know sacks of all different kinds you know flour sugar all that jazz and we're going to experiment with taking off the, the 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 inking on it and whatnot and the reason to have a bunch of different ones is for one there's some different recipes or trying different things on how and who and what and where and kerosene was needed for one of the recipes and lard and then didn't, you said you found something else was it lye uh it was javel water or javel water but it was Which, it was with wasn't it with some mixed with something else it had so it, so it's made of soda ash which if you dye, if you dye fabric, you should know what soda, like soda ash is. Um, and then the other component of it is pretty much bleach. <laughs> so that's, that's next on my recipe making. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that um, and, um, is there any, is there like a, like a, I don't know, somewhat organic kind of modernish recipe? clean <laughs> what? i'm not sure oxy clean <laughs> well that wouldn't be like organic though like that's very chemical and yeah no i don't know honestly i don't know what what because obviously like one of the most modern things people run to today is is it like a bleach but that is very mm -hmm. chemically yeah i don't you know i don't know like what would you use today to take out well i found I it interesting know. that in this article they talk about people dying them and i was like mm -hmm. yeah that that was why, interesting that why has that never been on my radar <laughs> like obviously wouldn't that be the simplest thing to do yeah yeah well i mean what they had to die with those walnut oak or red mud i mean that was really more about just getting rid of white white mm -hmm. fabric than necessarily covering anything up because i, I mean, don't kind of wouldn't that almost be the equivalent of us trying like getting being obsessed with tea staining things today <laughs> yeah tea dyeing remember things, that yeah. remember that craze <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah yeah i remember my mom was tea dyeing things i think at some point where um she was teaching some classes it was tea dyeing samples and um i was in high school and i was like hey i have to make this thing for a class i'm gonna tea dye the paper and then I'm going to set it on fire around the edges to make it look old. And that did not turn out well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, e. Marie says oh. that she's a sheep person. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking here. I'm missing. Let's see. Ah. Oh, so Mara Dim says the... Um, the thing about the 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 toenail catchers is maybe when there's multiple people in the bed, <laughs> maybe your sheet doesn't like cover everybody and somebody's feet are out. I mean, when I would think about that, I would think more about like toenail catching on like, you know, your sister's skin, like your sister's the... nose. Yeah, <laughs> like ugh. yeah, um, yeah. I remember my mom always talking about when they would visit you know, family down in South Carolina and stuff, they would pile all the kids in one bed. And then my mom said they would throw quilts and stuff over them. Um, and there's this one, and I, I need to borrow it from my mom so I can show or take pictures of it or whatever, so I can show it. It's actually woven. It's not a quilt, um, but it is from the mills. It's the tops of stockings or socks and they're, it's cast off. So one of my great uncles gathered all of these up and somebody in the family made it into like a bedspread. Hmm. But imagine 
<laughs> so basically, so think about, you know, those, the, the little pot holder weaving mm -hmm. loom. They're almost like that. It's, they're almost like individual pot holders that have all been sewn together. So think about how heavy that is. Imagine it now quilt sized with also maybe a quilt under it or over it. My mom was like, we could not roll over. <laughs> <laughs> the quilts are in the, th that blanket was so heavy. Like you could not turn over. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> And I think some of the quilts are that way too, because of like, they were big lumpy, you know, economy quilts, like utility quilts that, you know, I love, I took... love me, I love me a nice heavy quilt. You know, I do too. Like I, for warmth, I like a heavy quilt, but also to, like for snuggling, I kind of like a thinner quilt, you know, just something that's like, I don't know. I have a couple in inventory that are like wool crazies and they're so like they're so heavy that I could only picture using them like if you're like on like a sleigh ride in the winter out you know at night <laughs> like they're just, really, use it, really just use it as a rug <laughs> yeah they're really heavy really heavy all right should we move on to our last one here uncle yeah. uncle Eli yeah this I thought so I had never heard of this and I'm yeah. like what a cool thing yeah I've never heard of this either and it's funny because in North Carolina, it wasn't that far away from it, apparently. Yeah. So, yeah, when I figured out where this community is, um, Alamance County, um, exactly where this little, I don't know what the city really is, but it's near, like, Chapel Hill, right? Mm -hmm. So, when you were at school at Wake Forest, it would have been... I think right within an there. hour. I think within an hour. And, and the yeah. thing that stinks is the fact that I did look and this is still going on today. Yes. And that and, that's that was what I looked up. I was like, oh my God, they yeah. still like it's day after tomorrow, I think. Yeah, it's it's this week. It's Thursday. And so you um, guys, do you know anybody in North Carolina? <laughs> Are you in North Carolina? Actually I should put a call out in my Facebook group to see if anybody goes to it. Um yeah. and we got stinks because like I would have been in town when this was going on. Um and nobody ever knew about it, mentioned it, anything. Um, I found it very interesting kind of how it's evolved, where it used to be a lot of getting quilts done. And like, how many what was it? One of them, they got like 77 quilts done or something weird like that. I think it was 20 something, 27. Oh, I thought I said, I thought I saw like the, the record was like 77 or something like that. No, I think it was 27. All right. I mean, that's still a lot of quilts. Yes, it um, is. Yeah. And the fact that they just have a big potluck and then it turned into like a quilt show. And then I really love this, that they, they were really like, come on in here, youngsters, like learn how to quilt. Um, well, I like, yeah, I like when they talk, is it Nanny McBain? She's like. Yeah, it just kind of happens. It just kind of comes together. And you're like, anytime I've tried to just say, like, this party is going to come together, like, yeah, we're not really going to plan a New Year's party. It'll just come together. Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> nobody will bring ice. And, like, out of the 12 people being invited, 10 of them are going to bring macaroni and cheese. <laughs> like, it's never going to work out. So the fact that she's like, oh, yeah, I just even I mean, I does say that, like, she really did like plan the stuff out but mm -hmm. it, it did just kind of come together and I was like how cool you know that they that this the community was so like you know into this yeah I have to say there's definitely a part of me because I do remember some of these kinds of things when I was a kid like you know you have let's mm -hmm. say your annual block party we used to have that when I was a kid um mm -hmm. And I definitely like reading stuff about like stuff like this makes me a little nostalgic. I definitely kind of yeah, miss. Yeah. And it's not necessarily that I don't have community now. I definitely have places where I feel that, but it's not like this. It's mm -hmm. definitely not gathering all of these people together. And, um, you know, there's no one has to pay for anything. Everyone kind of just assumes a portion yeah. of the expense right and um, that's that was amazing to me that you know at least as of 1980 something that was what was happening mm -hmm. <clears throat> and and that all these people were just like here and doing this and then like this like um the little red schoolhouse quilt that they gave to the guy who kind of started it all which is that also kind of cool that like it was started by a man yeah um, yeah that that quilt is so cute 
I love that quilt. Robin just said, yep, every time we plan a family event, we have to have someone in control and make sure we aren't all bringing dessert. <laughs> and it also can be like herding cats. Uh -huh. Like uh -huh. these people here plan to have the day off a year in advance like whichever yeah, woman the woman's like i took a new job yeah. and told them I have every to time have she takes a new off. job yeah every time she takes it let's see uh, uh dorothy mcbain every time she worked a new job five different local mills she told each employer that she needed that day off you know i just happened to like glance over at the notes and the second note is an article by Wendy McBain that says, y'all sit down, quilt to spell at Uncle Eli's. It was in a news article in 1981. So Wendy McBain, I did see her online. Can we talk about Mildred? Mildred Guthrie? You have things Mildred, to say, apparently. Millie is, Millie is still alive. <laughs> and as what, she's your neighbor? Year, no, no, just as oh. of last year, Millie was still going to this. Oh, um, so on page 178, it says, you know, she's been attending these quiltings since 1958. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to say in the article, it didn't say like if she, how many she had missed, if she missed any, but as of last year, 2013 or 2013, 2023, um, she was 87 and assuming she's still alive, like nothing bad happened in the past year. Um, I don't think she's quilting anymore. They said she has dementia. But nonetheless, the lady is still with us. And I think that is so cool. Although I have questions about her quilts. <laughs> so um, in the article, she, they showed, um, she made these two quilted dresses and they showed one of the dresses. It's really cool. It looks, I don't know. I, it kind of looks like a cross between a wedding gown and a nightgown, <laughs> but it's like all quilted. It's white. Um, but they didn't show any pictures of these white on white quilts that she made, um, such as Patricia Nixon's wedding at the mm -hmm. White House uh, Rose Garden. The astronauts landing on the moon. Apparently, she w she wrote to Walter Cronkite to confirm that there were three golf balls on the moon so that her quilt was accurate. <laughs> and... And I'm like, I'm sorry, I thought you were going to tell me she asked for a piece of his flight suit. Like, <laughs> I would, well, I no, Cron Cronkite's an anchor. I'm like, why would Walter Cronkite, no, other than like he were reported to the news, but he wasn't on the moon. So. <laughs> oh, I thought you were saying, I don't know why. Why did I immediately go to like Neil Armstrong? Yeah. Or Buzz Aldrin. Know. Yeah. No, Walter yeah, like, Cronkite would have, was the reporter. Yeah. Um. So anyway, and then the Iranian hostage crisis. I'm like, what did you, like, what was on that quilt? What was on the Watergate quilt? Was it the Watergate Hotel? Was it G. Gordon Liddy like sneaking around? <laughs> like, Were you trying to find the quilts? Were you trying to find I them? did not look for them because I looked up the article about her, you know. Well, I looked up the article about the quilting party mm -hmm. and then saw this thing and I recognized her name. I was like, ah, Mildred Guthrie, she's one of the people in the in the paper. And mm -hmm. so then I read that article. Um I'm sure that they're available somewhere, I'm guessing. So I will have to look at that. You guys well, if you're at Close that, to Google. At that, at that moment there, let me share my screen. And so yeah, what gotta, you have you gotta make to it share. so I can share. Oh, sorry. Yeah, get on it. Let's go. Um why am oh, I have to make you a host. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have got a little something, something here. Where can I put? It? Oh, it's a, it's a video. I think I saw. Yeah, and it this was put up like just like a month ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this was erected. This little thing was erected in um here I will pause this. In 1921, Principal E.P. Dixon started high school classes in nearby vacant cotton gin, naming school for the inventor Eli Whitney. In 1923, high school classes relocated to building on this site. In 1928, a primary grade school building was added for students of local one-room type school center. 
Mandale Concord Spring and Green Hill, along with a Uniting Connector Auditorium that was also used for community events. Here begun Uncle Eli's Quilting Party in 1931, the one-day quilting and quilt show that continues annually on the first Thursday in April. And just how weird is it that we're reading about this, like, just a couple days ago? I know, the week it's happening. I thought it was so year. crazy. She walked in the door and she said, where do I pay? I said, there's nothing to pay. She said, where do I buy things? I said, there's nothing to buy. She said, where do I pay money to get coffee or food? I said, help yourself. She couldn't understand that. And I said, are you new here? And she said, yes, I just moved here from up north. I said, welcome to Alamance County. This is how we do things here. Every spring on the first Thursday in April, folks gather in the tiny community of Eli Whitney, North Carolina, to look at quilts, trade stories, and share a meal. The event, known as Uncle Eli's Quilting Party, was the brainchild of high school principal Ernest Dixon, who in 1931 wanted the school to be a place for the entire community to gather. Eighty women attended the first party in Eli Whitney's high school auditorium, and 13 quilts were completed. Eighty-four years later, Uncle Eli's Quilting Party is the oldest quilting event in the country. I want to go! People are still coming. I've been coming to Uncle Eli's. We started probably about 2008, off and on. It's a good social gathering. You become inspired. Um, you meet new friends. You learn new techniques, new ideas. It's really fun. It builds your skills up. It builds your confidence up as a quilter. And it just makes you feel like you're at home. When each of my, myself and my sisters got married, Mama had us put it in our wedding vows that I will be available on the first Thursday in April to go to Uncle Eli's quilting party. <laughs> what? I love bright colors and to see new designs and bright colors. It, it gets your brain going as to what your next quilt will be. Look, it's Libby McBain. She's a McBain. Mm -hmm. I, can I improve on that design? Can I change it a little bit and make it my own? For most of the last 50 years, three women played a major role in organizing the annual events, Nanny Lou McBain, Mildred Guthrie, and the late Pat Bailey. These days, not as much quilting goes on, but the quilt makers are here, even if only a few pick up needle and thread. Uncle Eli's Quilting Party is a community tradition kept alive by local folks and quilt lovers from across the state and country. The thing I love about quilting, I've had a friend and a family member say, well, I can just buy that quilt at the local store for $25, $50. Mm. And I'm like, you can't buy my quilt, that's my quilt. But unlike anyone else, that is what makes you unique. So we can all follow the same pattern. But your color scheme, the way you place something will always make it unique for you. What gorgeous quilts. Right? Look at that grandpa. <laughs> oh, look at that pound cake. <laughs> <laughs> so the the plaque, like I can't remember where. Oh, Francis um Val did the narration of this. Wasn't that cute? When I went to look at yeah. the cool thing, and they have a Facebook group, by the way, that I found. Um, and that's how I found out, like, oh, my God, it's still really going and everything. Mm -hmm. And Yeah, I was so excited to see that it was still going on, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I was like, I, I'm like, oh, what is going to be terrible if, like, the pandemic did away with it or something? Mm -hmm. And then to see that they're still going, I'm like, what an awesome thing. Um, yeah, it yeah, really, like, really makes me want to go. So that that historical marker, I think the money was raised for that by like a specific class. And I, it, I thought it was in the art in the paper, but in, it might have been in the article I read. Um, mm -hmm. They said specifically when that was put, you know, put up and, and raised. Um, I don't know that I, I don't, I'm, I wasn't paying any attention to like reading that part, I guess, in there. I was too like, I I want, I want this like nice community scenario. I mean, the one thing that's nice is like, we are going to the Lancaster Lebanon cold show next week. So we'll get a little bit of that camaraderie oh yeah for sure absolutely um 
but yeah, I do think it is interesting that, um, I mean, this thing is like, it's free. Like what kind of events anymore are like that, that you can just go to for free. And then people just <clears throat> bring their quilts and they're like, here, look at this. Like I would totally partake in that. Like I'd bring stuff mm -hmm. and be like, enjoy. Like, Yeah. Um, especially if, if they're going to feed you. Yeah. Either make me the host again or switch us to gallery view. I did. Because we're on speaker view. Oh, I did. Okay. Yeah. We're showing. We're there we go. Sh I mean, as I say, <laughs> we're, show we're showing up right on the, on the YouTubes. Um, but yeah, that's. That's all I've got going on for the night. So what do you guys think? Was this a good choice? I think it was. I, I definitely think it was. I struggled every week to read just because that's just I mean, a problem with you not the book <laughs> well but the, you know the thing is like i and i mean <laughs> so some of the papers are not i don't want to say it's like overly academic or anything but they're just it's like a dense topic mm -hmm. you know and depending on the the voice of the writer sometimes it is like if you're stupid enough to try to read it before you go to bed <laughs> but um I'm very glad that we read this because it it means I got I don't know what how many are how many papers were in here a lot was it sixteen or yeah there were a lot oh, of papers no I definitely felt like I got a very good like breadth of information um, Arlene commented AQSG events though not free and she said but they're good and we have a local Southern California quilt study group that meets and studies quilts. Yeah, Arlene, like I've got one of these yeah. in New England. Steph goes to quite a few in her area. Mm -hmm. They're not exactly the same kind of scenario though. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they don't necessarily always tend to be all day. And man, the New England one, it is like herding cats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't the think last it's- time we but, met was, yeah. I think the last time we met was 2022. Really? It's been 2021. I forget, but. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. All of our quilt studies down here, I think are really well, <clears throat> they're really well organized, but there's a lot of them. And I think people, you know, kind of pick and choose what they go to. So they're, they're sometimes they're smaller groups of people. Um, but yeah, like Uncle Eli's, it's just like exactly what other kind of thing could you, could you compare that to? I mean, Today? I just. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I think I can think of like some like kind of rural community events, like 4-H events, like that kind of stuff yeah. are kind of is sort of similar. But I mean, there's just nothing that is exactly like that. So I mean, I just not, say, like, at least not that I've ever heard of. Yeah. Or that's necessarily been going so long. <laughs> Robin, you always forget to read. <laughs> oh, Janet, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I mean, I like to... I feel like I don't read fiction anymore um, for, I mean, gosh, probably into my thirties. I, I almost read exclusively fiction. And then I started reading some like memoir type stuff. And now I don't think I read anything that's fiction. I read all nonfiction. And I am the, um, I'm the opposite. Yeah. Up until I finished grad school, I only ever read nonfiction. And then when I left grad school, I could not pick up that type of nonfiction <laughs> to save my life. And I yeah. started reading fiction for like the first time ever. I don't read only exclusively, but I will say like, I have not been good at reading my quilts, history, textile related books. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm really, I mean, we've already done a number of books already. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think so this, I actually feel like all, me. you know, all the money I've spent on, <laughs> even if it's not a lot of money, it's still money. Um, I have a, a large book collection. I mean, it's on library thing if y'all want to look at it. Um, sort of feel like I'm actually like making a dent. Half of me keeps seeing the re that really humongous coffee table book that that quilt book that's like really massive. Like the, the coffee Bob, table book. Um, the Bob Shaw book. Sure, I don't know who writes off of my, but it's that really big one. Half of me's like, should we read that? <laughs> No, that. because my arms will break trying to drag that up and down the stairs. <laughs> well, I was like, how, Although, how was that book meant to be consumed? It's got text in it. Like, it's not just. Well, pictures. if we're talking, if we're talking about the same book, it is like almost like an anthology of a bunch of quilters. So it's like every sec, you know, every page or couple of pages is about a quilter and their quilts. 
um, because see, uh, when and I'm, that shows you how much I have not looked into it. <laughs> well, and see that when I have looked in that one, I mean, not cover to cover. I mean, I page through it. Um, but actually one of my college professors is in there. So, um, yeah. And I, you know, of course I've read her, her entry and stuff. So, um, Arlene mentions the Mennonite community stuff. Yes, they do those. Um, she also said the Arizona Quilt Study Group. Um, Arlene, I've, I've done stuff with them when they do their virtual stuff. Um, but the some yeah, of the I know they're... about the fact that a lot of these quilt study groups are they're very far apart. The small ones mm -hmm. is it's it's you can't really like run around traveling to all that stuff all the time. And you have yeah. one coming up, Steph, don't you? I have like three coming up and I know two of them. I can't. Yeah. This coming well, one, but you have one you're traveling to. Yes. I'm going to go to the Eastern shore one. Cause I missed that mm -hmm. one before, but we have uh, one coming up on Sunday and then the next one is on Monday. And I'm like, I can't do either of them. Um, but then I think it's two weeks later is the next one. So yeah. Busy. And I can't, mm -hmm. I can't get these girls together up here to save my life. <laughs> Oh well, but yeah, somewhere well, they're somewhere they're they're getting together at least. <laughs> no, well, somewhere they're thinking about quilts. I somewhere even, I even said at one quilts. point, like I don't even care if we just get together and I will bring all the quilts. Like I don't care. Like let's just go. Um, yeah, Arlene is saying yeah. So that is where where Leah Zeber is going to be doing. Um, I keep getting the email about that, and I look at it. And I'm like, oh yeah, Leah, and then I'm like, oh no, this one's in person. This is an online one. <laughs> So yeah, that one is actually in Arizona, but yes, we know Leah. Mm -hmm. learn. I'm actually mm -hmm. going to see Leah later this month. That's what I was just asking about. Like, don't you have one? Oh you... no, I was yeah. talking about the Eastern Shore quilt study. No, I'm talking about the one you're traveling to. <laughs> well, I got to travel to the Eastern Shore. That's like a three-hour drive. Um, yes, I am going to also going to the one in Temecula with uh with Leah Zeber. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody, that one is... if anybody's going to that, you'll have stuff to harass. <laughs> that one I you know I look at that as like seminar light it's like a tiny you know it's a retreat versus mm -hmm. you know more mm -hmm. of a gathering so it's I mean it is a quilt study but it is more of like a like a retreat event so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well the nice thing is that um even though Quilt Making America was great and I learned lots of things we're gonna you know we're gonna go to something now text much text lighter um yeah. This is just this is just endless endless like goody things to look at. Um, this is I I mean I I've said it and I'm like seriously Don I'm not blowing smoke up your butt I love this book it is one of my favorite books of all time I bought it I'll have to tell the story at some point but I bought it not really realizing that I already knew Don and still even after reading it or re you know flipping through it looking at all the pictures seeing her picture in the back of the book. It still was like right over my head that I had actually done like a quilt event that she was part of one of the leaders. <laughs> I'm such a ding dong sometimes. But anyway, I, you but know, you I haven't saying, read I, this cover to cover, right? I haven't. I've read big sections of it. I have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I have not read it from cover to cover, but yeah, I di I've dipped into it a bunch. Um, and I have, there are certain sections that I have read the, all of the text. So Arlene um, says is... she'll, she will see you in Temecula. Ah, okay. That's awesome, Arlene. So just a reminder to everybody. So for next week, we're going to read chapters one, two, and three in here. And then if you want to be entered into a giveaway, we'll do at the very end. So you'll have the whole four weeks to enter into this. Send a, a, a picture a selfie a something of of you with this book and it can be a selfie it can just be the book laid out nicely on your reading desk and you don't have to be in it it can be with your pet it can be in your car where, you know whatever you want but something that says like I have this book and I am reading with you and that is going to get you entered into a giveaway we will have more information on exactly what will be in it we're just gathering some things right now um and it'll be nice because we can we'd like to use some of those photos as um kind of some some ad plug for dawn and for us and what we do here and that people have fun here because like come on we have fun here <laughs> and uh 
she's got some really cool things coming for you guys. And then don't forget that we have her special on an episode with us at the end. This is going to be really great. This is going to be and the biggest <laughs> deal. This is going to be the biggest deal one we've done so far. I don't know. Like people are probably gonna be like, oh, we're just reading the book now. The author is not going to be around. <laughs> like, oh. Well, and I said the other day, I'm like, it's publishing books soon or have recently published books. <laughs> wants to let us read their book and then come talk to us about it <laughs> there's a few people i have in mind yes there are i and it's funny do you know what book i tripped over <laughs> today was mary Kay Walvogel's so, so, was it soft times soft covers hard times um, soft. soft covers for hard times yeah. yes that's it yep i was like oh my god that's so funny and you and you had just texted me about like hey who's publishing books right now so well, you know, feel... as the art as the artist James 2024 QSOS scholar, I might have a little bit of pull. So <laughs> I'm gonna be I mean, out there you should, scouting. You, you should use that for all it's worth. Absolutely. I, you know, I've I've been like really I've been off my game because I have not been using that. <laughs> You mean you haven't used that to get like free dinners? Yeah, I haven't. Yeah, you know, I've totally been off my game. Like, well, yeah, probably the last few weeks. I, I was dropping it all the time. I was like, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I've forgotten to do it a few times. So you're gonna have to get on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that's gonna do it for us. I think that's gonna do it. Yeah, I um. Uh... I think I need to go sleep because I'm been feeling a little under the weather. So, ditto. I've been yeah. I've been like sounding it more and more as I talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, on that oh. note, I will be in the library at the New England Quilt Museum tomorrow. Steph will be live on her Twitch on Thursday at two. What are you doing this week? Are you doing more reading? Yeah, reading this. Uh -huh. Um, you know, because we just haven't read in a while, and then I have just a few like. You know, I mean, at this point, I always there's always little bits and pieces of things that come to me throughout the week that I share. So um, <clears throat> besides Florence Petto, there will be a potpourri of other quilt related things. <laughs> and then, Steph, are you are you like busy this weekend? Yes. Like too busy to maybe watch a quilt auction? Maybe we can watch a quilt auction. <laughs> which you know there was one that like you sent me oh yes that is this weekend and people really liked the last one that we watched yeah yeah and I was surprised by that because I was like I was worried nobody was going to want to watch it and lo and behold literally three times the number of people that usually watch my videos on the band watch them <laughs> yeah so oh, I was yeah thinking, well I was thinking yeah, well, maybe we'll do that Yes, I maybe we can announce that on on Thursday. So, Jan said thanks for the show in this community. Thank you so much. Oh yeah, for we sure. we do this specifically for that reason. Was we wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that the community was here and we love them and we want to hang with them and talk with them and do things with them. So that's why we're yeah. here. But yeah, we we're gonna you guys. We're gonna go to bed now. <laughs> Because we are hip. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. If you're not on the East Coast and ready to go to bed. <laughs> and um, we will see you hopefully Thursday or maybe this weekend, but definitely next Tuesday. Yep. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.